Hello, and welcome to another edition of Florida Sportsman Action Spotter Podcast. I'm Captain Rick Riles. Hey, right out of the box, let me apologize for the hoarseness in my voice this morning. I can now promise you that that whole COVID mess is no joke. Don't get it. I've got it. You don't want it. But we got to get the word out on the fishing around the state tonight, so we're going to see what's happening. We're going to start with a quick trip to Costa Rica, find out what the marlin bite's been like this week. I've seen some marlin from there. Then we'll come up to the northeast port of, part of Florida, check in with Captain David Boris, work our way down the east coast, through the Keys, up the west coast, out the panhandle, get the word from the water as to what's happening. Now, here's what I want to know from the boys tonight. As we wrap up 2021 and say goodbye to it, I want to know what fish did well for them this year and what fish was a disappointment. I got to thinking about it my own waters here in northeast Florida. For me, we had a better year in blackfin tuna, and I suspect we'll hear that from other areas of the state than I really expected. And our grouper were a complete flop. Uh, there's been a few legal grouper caught this year, and uh, but comparatively speaking, one of the poorest years I've ever seen. It was bad last year. I don't know what's wrong with our grouper fishing, but it's got to get better. It'll be fun to find out what each one of the guys from their area say what was good and what was bad in 2021. This week's Florida Sportsman Action Spotter was brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. By Shimano, bringing people and nature together. By Tournament Master Chum, the best chum on earth. By Nasara Paradise Rentals, your dream vacation. By DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. And by Young Boats. You want the finest in flats, bay, and offshore hybrids? You need to check out youngboats.com. We're also, we've got a real uh, treat planned tonight. We had a new world record caught in Fort Pierce this week. Holy smokes, 58-pound, 8-ounce Jack Creval. That is a monster. Young Nicholas Fano caught it. It's a junior world record. It's also a 50-pound class world record. I want to talk to Nicholas. Let's get it rolling. All right, we're going to make our first stop over in Paradise. That's Nassara Paradise Rentals and the, my favorite fishing spot in the whole world, I know Craig Sutton is waiting to give us a report. Craigie, I don't have to ask you if the fishing's good in Nassara. I already know it is. Well, it is, It is, Ricky, and it's been, this has been a big marlin for, year for us, some big mahi. We're starting to get pretty consistent on the yellowfin, but I think on my blog uh, last week, we had, a, we had a hiccup day about uh, eight, yeah, about eight days ago. We had four boats fishing. We had two bonita between four boats. Golly, don't and and you know it happens, and you know that the people have got to understand. But I had a friend of mine, Craigie, that that booked five days in the Dominican Republic um, last year, and uh, during the peak of the season, had one shot at a white marlin. I mean, it just it just happens. Well, Superman has his kryptonite. That's you right, know? buddy. So, I mean, just, it is what it is. But, you know, we have been going for well over a year without a hiccup day. And I was thinking, man, we got to have one sooner. And it just never happened. So, in a way, we were long past due. And, you know, fortunately, the very next day, they went back to bite hard again. Nice big dolphin and, and uh, yellowfin and sailfish and marlin. So, you know, it's, it's fishing, you know, it's fishing. And, you know, the four people that were out that day, I've talked to every one of them since they fished, and they all said, hey, you know, it's fishing. Yeah. I mean, they were totally cool about it. I had a, a group from Canada that we ended up rebooking about four days later, and they went out and had a real good day. But, you know, it was a, you know, I mean – our job is to put you on a good boat, good bait, good presentation, equipment, and all that stuff in the right spot. But the rest of it, you got to talk to that guy above it. Now, now let's talk about the other end of your business. You just got off the phone with with Terry Jackson, I believe. Who? Who did you just talk to? That had eight marlin. Um, oh, Terry Clark. Yeah, Terry yeah, Clark. yeah. I'm had sorry. eight marlin. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I had eight marlin. In two days of fishing, he had a, a 12 and a 15 year old son on board. They both got their marlin, and Terry got one that's a blue that's 
I, he's, I don't think he's 400, but I think he's an honest three or 350. Mm. And that's a nice fish, man. It's that's a, great a really fish. good fish. But they had mahi. They had uh, one mahi that probably, you know, he's, he's, he's about 60, 65, 66 inches long. I'd say he was close to 40 pounds. Nice fish. Real nice right. and yellow fin and stuff. I mean, he, he fished, uh, four days with us and, and I uh, got home and here it is, uh, like eight days after he got home and he's already, but uh, already, uh, penciled in for next December. Oh, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that sounds like yeah. me. That sounds like me. Yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. Well, well, the nice part about this guy, he's a Texas guy and they're, they're, they're good fishermen. They're good people. And he, 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 he told his sons, he said, this is the, the fish of a, uh, the trip of a lifetime. He says, so it's not going to be like this every time, but, uh, you know, that's pretty good. Eight Marlin, i take that. I mean, when I get there tomorrow afternoon, I'm not going to serve tomorrow, obviously, but I will the next three days in a row, and hopefully I'll get me a couple. I haven't gotten a Marlin this year. Ah, you will. Not, you will. The year's, yeah, awfully, the year's could, awfully young, my boy. Craigie, as always, yes, we, we appreciate it. Tell people how they can get a hold of you. They can call me at 904-591-2161, and our blog is up to date within not from today but everything previous today so they can see it with full color and uh you know we don't leave that question mark we let people see it see it in you know full color and see the people and all that stuff how do they find it fishingthesara.com you got it buddy fishingthesara.com we appreciate you craig we'll talk with you next week now it's time to hit florida let's get up in the northeast corner and check in with our buddy, Captain David Boris. David, how are you? Hey, buddy, I'm doing better. Sounds like a lot better than you're doing. Well, I'll be okay. You know me, I'm tough, but I'll get yeah, through this. Man. Tell me about your fishing. Well, you know what? It's been it's been good, but I, I you know, I've talked to other captains, and, and you're hearing mixed stories. Some guys are struggling. Some guys are doing good. And I, I tell you what I did this week, Rick, and I went up, you know, to – check everything out, you know, look at my water temperature. Water temperature is still pretty good. Didn't get too cold like I thought it was going to get, you know. It's still, you know, for this time of year, you know, we were still like 60 degrees. So that's, that's you know, I'll take that. That's, that's not bad. And uh, the clarity was really, really clear. Got up on the mud flats, and, man, I mean, it was gin clear. It was beautiful. So, you know, with that being said, I'm thinking, hey, this is going to be great. But you know what I wasn't seeing, Rick? I wasn't seeing any bait. And, you know, there was a lack of birds, lack of bait. And I, we struggled, we struggled. And I, I just, you know, finally I pulled the plug. And I said, guys, come on. This, 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 they're not here. They're just not here. And I was hoping we were going to get to do some nice sight fishing, have a school of reds come in on us, make a few casts to them. Nothing better than that. So I left. I went back in the creek pushed back and started working my deep holes. And as soon as I get back into the creeks, I'm seeing the bait. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, we just, we hit the deep holes. I've talked about this before. I look for, you know, either that first hole, the second hole, and, and some creeks will have even three good holes in them. And some of these holes can be as deep as 20 feet deep. Uh, the particular creek that I like to fish uh, has one hole in it. It's 20 feet deep. And it's a big, it's, it's a pretty big bend, so it, it's a long area to fish. But you still, you know, it, it's not that easy. you got to still work hard and find these fish. Uh, you're not going to just go out there and start throwing bait and, and think you're going to catch them. You've got to work it piece by piece by piece. And the way I do that is I take my guys and I drift through the whole, the whole bend. And imagine an oxbow is what you've got, you know, a little... Uh, banana shaped hole and I start at one end and I have the guys fishing and casting to the shallow working their bait baits down 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 till they get to the deep water and then try to keep them in the deep water as long as I can until we find the fish and sure enough we started finding fish and we ended up actually catching about 20 20 something trout now we we had no keepers none of them were keepers but it was, a, it was a good bite. It was one on, almost on every cast. Uh, we did get some nice keeper reds. We had a lot of rat reds. 
We had four or five flounder in there. So it turned out the last two hours of the trip really turned out to be very productive. Good, good. Well, David, it looks like um, a little bit of warm weather right now would certainly work in your favor. I am heartened by the fact, though, that we haven't had that steep, shocking decline that I've been worried about uh, hurting our snook population too much. I think I've, I, I, no, I, think I haven't seen still any dead okay. snook. Yeah, yeah, I think we're okay, and I haven't seen any dead snook. And, no, I, and it's usually those sudden temperature drops right. that mess us up. Right. Not those gradual ones. Yeah, we haven't seen that. Cap, I appreciate it as always. Let's make sure we can get your report next week. You know where I'll be, Rick. Thanks, David. Captain David right. Borey is one of my all-time favorite podcasters. We are going to head on down the East Coast and find out what Jim Ross is up to. Jimmy, how are you? Doing fantastic, Rick. It sounds like you're a little scratchy, but uh, hopefully you're not feeling too bad. Well, I tell you, don't uh, do not do this COVID thing, Jim. It's just not fun. Not not worth it, is it? No, uh, no, 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 no. Well, Rick, you know, we've had this huge blow, thanks, you know, to uh, Mother Nature. Uh, but here's the really cool thing about it, pop, 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 pun, no pun intended, right? Um the really cool thing is, is that the, the water temperatures are dropping. That's going to kill some of the algae that's in the northern lagoon and uh, or northern Indian River lagoon and, and then southern and, and middle Mosquito lagoon, and hopefully clear some of those waters up. It's also going to push a lot of the fish that were kind of scattered all around the place. It's going to bunch them up. It's going to put them in holes. It's going to put them in sloughs, depressions, um, residential canals. So any of that deeper water area is where your guys you know, and, and gals are going to want to get out and look this week. That's, that's the main thing. And, and here's the second thing, full moon. So we've got cold weather and full moon. That means sleep in, have an extra cup of coffee, you know, an extra egg, toast, whatever you want. You don't even need to get to the water before 930 or 10 right now. And the best bite is going to be probably from about noon until about 130 for the next couple of days. Uh, it may extend a little later uh, as we get into the weekend, but it's not a scenario where you're going to get out early and you're just going to kill it. It's it's just not going to happen. Uh, you've got both the wind, uh, or I should say both the, the temperature and the moon against you right now. So don't fight that. Just go with the flow. Get up later. Catch fish later. Gotcha. I like the sound of that advice. I promise you. Hey, Jim, we're wrapping up 2021. <clears throat> what fish performed well for you in 2021 and what fish do you feel like you didn't have the numbers you should have had? Oh, it's a toss up for the number for the fish that performed well for me. Um, and so I'll start off with black drum. Black drum performed very well for me this year, uh, both small fish and big fish in the rivers, lagoons, uh, and near shore waters. All three places had good numbers of this. But but there's a second, and, and we've spoken about this in the past couple of weeks, the juvenile trout are starting to come back. And that means that we have better water quality. We're getting spawning activity again. And so I'm really excited about the potential of this coming year and even next year of, about what our trout fishing is going to be if we continue to see these improvements. As far as an underperforming uh, fish goes, it's definitely hands down got to be the redfish. We used to be known as, you know, quote unquote, uh, the redfish capital of the world. Although I think Louisiana would probably, uh, you know, want to buy for that title as well. Yeah, yeah they'd but, win too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we, you know, for years and years and years, we were known for our giant redfish cruising the flats, tailing, you know, sight casting at these fish, fly casting to some of these, you know, 40 plus inch redfish over here. And we really don't have much in the way of redfish because we've got no habitat that redfish like. Um, up around the, the, the Oak Hill Edgewater area, we still got some decent little schools, or little areas of redfish. Um, but other than that, you know, with the grass die-off that we've seen here in the Indian River and Banana River lagoons, we just don't have the habitat to support redfish. And so they have definitely underperformed. In, in comparison to what this fishery could potentially be. I see. Yeah, you know, that's funny because up in northeast Florida, it's been quite different. Uh, we do not have the trout that we should have, and everybody's uh, concerned about it. And our redfish are very stable, uh, largely because every fall 
the channel of the St. John's River literally clogs with those big bull reds uh, down yeah. deep, and yeah. they're protected, and there's nothing but sharks for them to worry about. And, um, I mean, they, they just keep the spawn coming every year, and it just seems like it's so dialed in up here. But you're right. Down in Mosquito Lagoon, you destroy the habitat, your fishing's going to go with it. Yeah, and and those fish have done exactly what your fish have done. They've seek they're seeking out those areas, you know, those the the near shore waters, the inlets like Ponce Inlet and Sebastian Inlet that have good flow at them. That's that's what our our breeder fish have gone to. They have moved out of the in inshore interior waters where they historically did live, and now they've moved out into those those areas that are a little uh, more stable, I guess you would say. Gotcha. Fantastic. Jim, as always, thanks so much for the report. Please tell me we can check with you next week. I look forward to it, Rick. I look forward to it. Captain Jim Ross from East Central Florida. Okay, an extra little side trip tonight. I want to introduce you to a very exciting new young angler. I first met Nicholas when his dad's boat was tied up next to mine at uh, Pirates Cove Marina in Stewart, Florida. And I tell you, he and his brother were fishing machines back then, and I got the word this week. In fact, I saw the picture on the Internet that Nicholas has been approved for a new world record 50-pound class and junior world record Jack Creval. Get ready for this, 58 pounds, 8 ounces. Is that right, Nick? Yeah. Wow, that is a monster. Where would you catch him? Uh, I caught him on a seawall. On a seawall, what, in your neighborhood? Yeah. I see. Okay. What'd you catch him on? A live finger mullet. A live finger mullet. That's absolutely fantastic. It probably didn't take you too long to figure out you had a jack, right? No, not at all. I mean, they're they're pretty tough. I mean, how how big was the biggest one you caught before that one? Uh, Probably like 40 pounds, 35 pounds. Yeah, that's still a monster. That's still yeah. a monster. Now, my understanding is, and, and congratulations to you, you're one of the first people I've ever known that pulled it off. You actually got to weigh that fish and then release it, right? Tell me about that. Well, right when we weighed it, it, it was quick. We put, quickly put it on the scale, got the weight, and just let it go right away. Wow. Who, make- who was with you? Um, my brother was with me and my mom and some neighbors. But my brother was actually the one who netted it, too. Ned, I can't even imagine netting a almost 60-pound Creval. How long did the fight go on? Um, about 40 minutes. About 40 minutes. Wow. What'd you catch it? What'd you catch him on tackle wise? Uh it was a 4500 uh spinning reel pen. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, now you caught him on braid, right? Yeah. Wow. It was 30 pound braid. Wow. Now you didn't have a boat. I mean, he he seems to me like he could have had a lot of places to hang you up. He didn't have anywhere he could get you hung up. Um, there was some piloting and some mangroves, but he he went in between them. Wow, you were fortunate. You were very lucky. Well, There's ne- also a couple boats were gone by. We had to flag them down because that fish is far out. Oh, so they the boats were nice enough to get out of your way, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's that's excellent. That's how fishermen should be. That's excellent. Now, that world record, I got to tell you, son, you may have that record for a long, long time. Do you know how big the fish was that you beat? Um, The 50-pound class, I believe, was 58.6 pounds. Uh-huh. And the junior angler was like high 30s, I believe. Yep. Yep, it it's. I'm gonna have to see a junior angler catch a bigger one than 58.8 to believe it. I I promise you that. Well, son, we really wanted to congratulate you from Florida Sportsman, and uh, we are so proud to have you as part of the fishing community. How often do you and your brother fish? Um, almost every day. Have you have you caught any snook where you live? Yeah. Now now where exact where. Is your canals in uh, in where Palm Palm Coast? Palm, or? City. Palm City. Palm City. Okay. All right, buddy. Well, Nick, it was great to talk to you. I miss seeing you around the marina, and congratulations on your world record. I hope it stands for many years. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Nick. 
that was a, that was a lot of fun. Nicholas Farn, congratulations to him and his dad. I know his dad was awfully proud when he called a new world record Jack Craval. That means it's time to talk to the Bean, Captain Bean, Brandon Storen. How are you, my boy? I'm great, Rick. How are you doing? I'm doing outstanding. Well, I'm doing okay. I've got the COVID. But yeah, I just got over that not too long ago. Oh, that's no fun, is it? No, not at all. It wasn't too bad. Uh, man, I tell you what, I'm, I can't wait to feel better. Uh, tell me how your fishing's been this week. Yeah, well, it's no secret. We've had uh, a lot of wind. Oh, yeah. I mean, we had a day that's over 30 knots. Woo. Um, you know, it seems like that yesterday and today it was blowing like a, around 20. Um, but, uh, you know, we had a north wind. So the shallow patch reef uh, kind of protected by that north wind. And uh, we made out really good on the patches today. Really big lane snappers and porgies. Um, you know, some really good eating fish and also a blast on light tackle, a couple of nice buttons too mixed in. And, uh, you know, that's just a great way to spend a half day. Uh, that's kind of what we did this week. You know, so I use that cold front tour advantage. Sometimes those fish push up on the shallow patches, uh, after a cold front and made out really good today. A big jumbo lane snapper. Oh, that's outstanding. Hey, Brandon, let me ask you something. What have you heard from offshore? Uh, for offshore? Yeah. Uh, we've had uh, some good sail fishing. Uh, I went out on a bay boat a couple days ago um, with my buddy from the Everglades Fishing Company. Uh, we went three for three on sails um, while we're targeting them for part of the day. Saw a lot of spraying um, sailfish. Saw them showering on Ballyhoo on that reef. A lot of fun, you know, pitching a bait at them. Um, big tunas are still around. The big black fin tunas are still around. Um, some nicer yellow tails out on the reef as well. Pretty much what's been going on offshore. All right. As we wrap up 2021, what fish, uh, was best for you this year and what fish did Alamorada just seem to be lacking? It just didn't have as many as it, as it should have. I think that, uh, for 2021, the uh, triple tailing was incredible. So lots of nice big triple tails this year. Uh-huh. It's been a blast. Great numbers of them. That was probably um, the the biggest surprise. Uh, and the biggest surprise of fish that were lacking so far this year, I will say, uh, have been red drums. Really? Seems like the red didn't really get thick down here in the Keys like they have in the past years. It's weird how... Like for a few years after Irma, we had a large number of reds down here almost year round. And it seems like that for this year, you know, the water never got cold enough to really get a good red drum bite. I mean, there's two or three weeks straight uh, for December and early January where I was going tarpon fishing, catching big springtime tarpon, you know. So I, I, I guess that, uh, yeah, to sum it up, the best fishing was. Triple tail, the one species that I feel like we've been lacking this year have been red drum. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that sums it up. I'm glad your triple tailing's been so good. I think uh, triple tailing's getting good, and fishermen are getting better at catching triple tail. So I'm, Oh, I'm, no, don't say that. I don't want to hear that. I, I know. I hate to say that, but I think you and I both know it's true. But I think we need to keep strong limits on them. The limits are pretty strong right now. And then we'll always have some every year. So I'm hoping for that. Thank you so much. I think they should make a one. I think they should make the limit max two per vessel. I don't have any problem with that. I, that that'd yeah. be all right with me. But um, I just want them to leave them open year round. I want to be able to catch them when we get them. That's for darn sure. All right. Oh, yeah. th thank you, Bean. I appreciate it. Hey, absolutely. Feel better, Rick. I will. We'll talk with you next week. Our right, thanks to Captain Brandon Storen for a great Florida Keys report where he says the triple tail have been good this year, and everybody, it seems like almost everybody's worried about speckled trout. Let's go on around toward the West Coast and stop in 10,000 Islands with Captain Steve Dahl. Steve, how are you? I'm doing great, Rick. How about yourself? Doing fine. Doing fine. Tell me what's good going day. on in 10,000 Islands. Well, we're doing all right. We, you know, we had some really severe weather here that, that made the... Uh, Kind of some national news. We had about five tornadoes ripped through Collier County Woo! and Lee County on our side. And 
um, haven't had that. That's just not for us. And uh, we uh, had some pretty uh, pretty uh, milked up water. You know, water kind of looks like chalk and milk after all that kind of blew through. We had a real big front kind of come through on uh, this past Sunday morning. And uh, that shut things down pretty good on Monday. Yesterday we got, we we're fortunate enough to get out today. The winds weren't terribly bad. We stayed inshore, but uh, waters are looking dirty. That's for sure. So finding clean water is probably going to be the key. We got another front coming this weekend. So um, probably not as severe, but, you know, it's going to dip those water temperatures down. And um, we're getting overnight lows in the 40s right now. That was last night. And we're going to have it again tomorrow. So our water temperatures, you know, dropping pretty good. It's going to be in the low 60s. I'm predicting probably tomorrow morning, which is pretty darn chilly. And uh, to remember, our December was very warm. Yep. So uh, we're having a really uh, big about face, and the fish's uh, metabolism is definitely going to be shut down for a little bit. So my predictions: the snook fishing is going to be a little tough going forward until it, you know we get a warming trend. Um, I'd really, you know, we focused on trout today. They were still around, which good um we had to kind of go old-fashioned with the popping corks and kind of ring the dinner bell a little bit for them to kind of find the bait uh our officials just weren't having it today because of uh the dirty water so that's the uh kind of just on the trout and the reds where it's kind of the same thing we you know bait kind of got blown out in our area so we kind of went old school with some uh, ladyfish chunks and uh, even a couple of pieces of cup mullet that seemed to get enough scent in that dirtier water and uh, kind of had to wait them out. But, you know, we found fish today, so that was that was good. When Steve, um, when Steve Dahl has to resort to ladyfish chunks, that's a tough yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, a- I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, you got to do what you got to do. You know, yes, Mother sir. Nature gives you, you know, that's what we, I think a lot of people fail, you know, we're all guilty of that, of being stubborn and wanting to fish it our way. And you can't, you got to allow the conditions to dictate what you're going to do on any given day. And, um, certainly not my most glorious way to fish, but that's the reality of it. You, you have to go with what mother nature gives you. And that's what the hand we're, we're going to be dealt with here probably for a couple of days here. So, um, you know, that's the reality. Don't have really have an offshore report for you, Rick, just because of all the, the nice. high winds uh, yeah. throughout the weekend and yesterday, but, um, I'm anticipating it's looking like the forecast is going to die down and, you know, we'll definitely have some info on that, uh, later in the week. So ocean's going to be closed for a few days. There's no doubt. Well, listen, yeah. I appreciate it. And I, and I know your customers appreciated you lowering yourself to using light lady fish chunks. <laughs> you do you do. That's it. Thank <laughs> you, Steve. We'll talk next week. All right, Rick. Be well. Uh-huh. Thanks. You know what Yamaha Outboards love? The genuine formula and consistency of Yamalu Marine Engine Oils. Plug, 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 plug. Outboards are subjected to punishing conditions like high loads, salt, and humidity, a mix that automotive oils can't handle. Yamalu full synthetic and marine performance formulas are certified to protect against friction and corrosion for reliable performance every time. Ah. Find Yamalu Marine Oils at your nearest Yamaha Outboard dealer. Locate them at yamahaoutboards.com backslash dealers. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Hey, Raj, you know, being consistent is a mark of a quality product. If you've been Florida's number one chum for over 10 years, there's got to be a reason. For 10 years, Tournament Master Chum has lived up to his name. That's why more tournament pros insist on Tournament Master than any other chum. It's the only chum with menhaden milk mixed right in. That means it gets a scent out faster and deeper than any other brand of chum. It comes in a grind size for every species from kingfish to catch and bait. Your fishing time is way too precious to you second-rate chum. Bring the action to you by insisting on Tournament Master Chum. It's worth every penny. When you're ready for the finest in custom-made flat spay or inshore-offshore hybrids, you are ready to meet the Young family in Inglis, Florida. For over 21 years, the Young family has built custom boats one at a time for every type of fishing. Nothing can sneak up on a flat quite like the Gulf Shore flats boats, and I've never fished a better hybrid than the Young 24s and 27s. Rob Young is a naval architect who takes tremendous pride in each and every build for each and every customer that wants their boat custom-built exactly the way they want it is it time for you to move up are you ready to own the finest boat built then you need to visit the young boat facility in inglis florida or check them out online at youngboats.com our thanks to steve Dolph down in Ten Thousand islands he had to stoop all the way to 
chunks of ladyfish to catch his redfish today. Let's hear if it's that desperate in Southwest Florida or not. How about it, Greg Stamp? Are you there? I'm, I'm, I'm definitely here, Rick, and um, I absolutely understand Steve's dilemma right now. We went from, uh, what, what we could say, we went from YooHoo to you ever make that Nestle Quick when you were kids, oh, yeah. where you made it oh, a little yeah. bit darker? What do you mean yeah. did I ever make Nestle's Quick? Who are you talking to? <laughs> well, that's that's what we're in right now. Uh, obviously, we've had some pretty vicious storms come through. We dodged a tornado to our north, a tornado to our west, and a tornado to our south. So, wow, uh, it's been an interesting uh, few days for us. But overall, I know that um, I haven't been able to fish for about three days. But before that. We did catch some really good fish, and tomorrow will be my first day back because the winds are going to be below 25 miles an hour. Wow. How about that? that that's something. Yeah. But uh, that's yeah. been. Hey, let me ask you a question uh, while, yeah. while we, we don't have a report necessarily to break down this week. For the year 2021, what fish has performed well for you? What's What fish has performed a little better than you expected? And what fish has not been as prevalent in your area as it should have been? Well, that's easy. You know, we went through that really vicious cycle of red tide back in 18. And, you know, we, we didn't appreciate some of the things that we had that were kind of the easy picking. The, the trout, uh, in my opinion, has come back unbelie- unbelievably strong, Rick. It's really exciting now when I'm catching fish that are up to 23, 24 inches, knowing they're going to get bigger in the long run. Um, and the numbers of fish that we can find that are in those smaller sizes are just amplified tenfold comparatively to years back two even two years ago, Rick, I couldn't have caught a trout in my neighborhood if I was trying for hours and hours. Well, so that's, that's, that's a positive. The one thing I can tell you has been a real downer for me. And then, and, you know, I mean, out, I'm out there quite a bit two, three, four hundred times over the last two hundred two years or so I've probably been out and I have only caught me on my boat and as far as I know most everybody else in my neck of the woods, I've caught two flounder. Huh. Now that's I didn't realize flounder were part of your fishery. That's a that's a real drop off for you? Well, we would always catch them randomly, uh-huh. you know, small ones here and there. And occasionally we get one that might be 20, 21, 22 inches, Good fish. which would be a nice yeah. fish for us. But to absolutely catch two fish and both the fish I probably caught were about 10 inches is kind of a sad, I don't know what's going on there for me, but it's just not cool. Even the guys who fish around our wrecks and our reefs rarely rarely come back with a keeper flounder well that's that's interesting but i am pleased to hear about your trout that's for darn sure especially the size oh absolutely yeah you know uh to tell you one or two other small things before the front came through the permit bite was very good for the guys there on our near shore reefs out to about nine miles and then as close as two miles they did pick up a lot of sheep's head which are starting to move into our back bays now I think tomorrow, Rick, with the wa- way the water's chilled off, that'll probably be the first thing I go after to see if those those crunchers are sitting on them docks and on them pilings. I might have a good chance at them big sheep's head because, you know, they don't move around much. They just kind of sit there and pick. Yep, yep. They're kind of like me. They just kind of sit there and eat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cap. Greg, we appreciate it as always. Please tell me we can check with you next week. Absolutely. I look forward to it, Rick. Captain Greg Stamper with Southwest Florida. Time for West Central. That means it's Ray Markham time. Raymond, how are you? Well, I am on the mend. Yep, me too. <laughs> I'm getting better. Fe- so. Feeling better than I have in the last couple of weeks. And, but and but along with everybody else, I think we're all experiencing a little, experienced a little bit of under the weather stuff. Uh, speaking of which, we've had some pretty severe weather over here in West Central area in the last few days uh, with tornadoes and, and uh, some heavy weather coming through on Sunday. So um, guys are kind of recovering from, from that with the sea settling a little bit before they start heading back offshore. Probably by uh, uh, midweek, things should settle out and, and actually be really good. But just prior to that front, man, the, the snook fishing – from the guys that I spoke with, they they said they hadn't seen snook biting that good in a long time. 
So anytime something like that's going on, you know there's some big change coming. And and uh, we've been having temperatures in the 40 ever, 40s ever since then. So, you know, we're seeing a huge downturn, and I think those fish knew it was coming. So Yeah, you, um, can, you, can, uh, you can read so much more about fronts coming through and stuff from, from watching what's going on in nature than you usually can yep. from watching the 6 o'clock news. That's true. I, I got what I call the weather knee. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I shattered a kneecap about, uh, well, I don't know, 40, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. And, and ever since then, anytime the weather changes, I can feel it. And so like, oh, boy. <laughs> My big so, labs, I've got two labs, and they both stop shedding if it's about to get real cold. Wow. So Well, that, that's a plus. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. For a very short period of time, they should live in Alaska. Right. Yes, sir. Well, Cap, that is great news on the snook. I'm glad to hear it. Please tell me we can check in with you next week when your boats have been back offshore and we got more to talk about. Yes, sir. We'll absolutely do that. Thank you, Ray. Captain Ray Markham in the West Central. Our thanks to Ray Markham. Now it's time to go to downtown Homosassa and check in with one William Tony. William, how are you? Doing good down here in downtown freezing Homosassa is all I can tell you. We had a a hurricane, a cold front, and a flooding, a minor flooding thing all in one day on Sunday. Wow. <laughs> I mean it actually it actually got over the seawalls and banks and there was some damage, but nothing very major, but you know, it definitely upset the fishing from what the status quo was. Now, William, let me ask you something. Um you and I are both old crackers. The water's yep. rising, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I hate, Here. I hate to even say that that Al Gore was right and all that kind of stuff. And I'm <laughs> certainly not, certainly not convinced that we've caused it. But there is, I can tell you right now, from living on the river for sixty years now, it's rising. Absolutely, I see it same here on the Big Bend. You know, there's. There's little creeks I used to step across from, you know, up in Gulf Hammock all the way up, and we even had property up there in Keaton Beach and Steena Hatch and all that area, and it, you know, we've had our well up in our camp in Gulf Hammock go from freshwater to saltwater, yeah. and we're about a mile and a half as a crow flies from the Gulf, so it's it's definitely gotten wider. Same with the Homosassa River, and I'm with you, you know, it's there's no doubt when you can see it with your own eyes, so... You know, there's there's no discrepancies there, but what's causing it, I have no idea. But I have never seen uh, a front like this this early, I guess, in midwinter. Generally, we get them like in March or somewhere in there when it's a late front that comes that, that comes across the Gulf and floods us. So either someone has messed up our calendar and it should be like April now, or I don't know what's going on. I, I tell you, one of the one of the most informative conversations I ever had was with one of the four men that started the Weather Channel. Yep. And, and he said, here's what I need you to know about weather. He said, first off, the first job of the Weather Channel is to get more people to watch the Weather Channel. So he <laughs> said, just keep that in the back of your mind. He said, second off, he said, global warming is irrefutable. He said, now. The cause is certainly not irrefutable. If you're going to convince me man causes it, then you have to convince me who melted the ice the first time because this was right. not our first ice age. And he said, right. and, and the last thing I need you to know is quit asking the same guy what, uh, who can't tell you whether or not it's going to rain next Tuesday what the planet's <laughs> going to be like in a 1,000 years. And he said, global warming is real but I don't know if it's going to end next week or next century. And I think he was absolutely right. Yep. Well, Hey Rick, I, when I was growing up, I used to watch Fred Flintstone and I think it was them with that Barney rubble and all them and those stone age cars yabba -dabba causing all that, 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 but that would do. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, think he was, I think you're exactly right. Um, so, hey, I, go I was going to tell you though, you know, some of the cold weather, what would, you know, is, is, helped us a little bit in the fishing because i do like those those cold days where it drives the fish up into uh the rivers here on the big bend and we didn't have that this winter in fact today i was out on the outside around some keys 
tide just barely come in and I could get in there and pull on, on I always tell people the southern facing sun hitting on a east to west key on the backside. You'll feel it. I had bibs and coats on and by the time I got in there and started pulling my boat, you know, I was peeling stuff off. But, you know, as far as pushing fish up the rivers, it hasn't got there yet. Now we may get into that this coming up next week with the next run. But it just has not been cold enough to push like the trout and everything. We've been catching some black drum and sheep's head in the river and some redfish and a couple keepers. But I've had one of my best red fishing days in December when you couldn't even tie your shoelaces if they were held at gunpoint. Your fingers are so numb. But, you know, just fishing right within eyesight of McCray's, just stacking fish in the rivers. I haven't had that yet. Huh. Okay. Well, hopefully that's right ahead of you. I sure hope so. William, do we have any backstrap yet? We don't. I have. I've got a one half day tomorrow, and I've got the last weekend of just you know going for the hell mary. You know, it's it's uh, most management areas have um, you know closed up, but what you have on the Big Ben, if you're in a private club or you're in a pay per use management area, you get that extra two weeks, Good and time. that's that will end this Sunday. So. You know, if it happens, it happens. But you know what? I had a good time trying, and if I don't get one, I got next year. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? And you feel exactly <laughs> like I do. By the way, Catfish Hunter stopped by the feeder the other night just to show me oh. that he did survive the season, and he'll see me next year. Well, there you go. He'll be even bigger and better and waiting on you, bud. Yeah, he will. Thank you, William. We appreciate it. Cat William, uh, Cat William Tony. Our thanks to William Tony, who said it was downright cold for his redfish charter today. Now let's head on up into the northwest section and check in with Kevin Lanier. Kevin, how are you? Captain Rick, we're doing just fine. How about yourself? Doing fine. Doing fine. Hanging in there best I can anyway. Tell me about your fishing. Well, uh, we continue to fight those battles with the uh, passing cold front, but our inshore fishing is still absolutely on fire. And believe it or not, we got another permit this past week. Ooh. One of the ladies down near the marina, she hooked the permit and uh, put it uh, on the bank. Huh, now, that's the same place the last one was caught, wasn't it? Yep, that's that's two in the last uh, in the last month out of that same spot. I mean, redfish have been, uh, uh, you know, just absolutely during a certain period of time during the day, uh, they are just absolutely on fire along with the, uh, trout are doing good. The uh, we're getting some pompano, we're getting some mangrove snapper. So that part of our fishery is uh, really good right now. And the offshore stuff, we're battling the wind. Guys, it, uh, very few guys are actually getting out right now because you know there's not enough lay down between trips. Yep, yep, I understand that. Um, I got a question for you. Okay. For 2021, as we wrap it up, what fish? performed better than you expected um, and, and you felt like you really had a good year with. And what fish were you short on? You know, I, I would say uh, best fish would be a tie. Uh, we did extremely well on black fin tuna compared to any other year. And our black snapper, uh, we did very well this year. I think we caught uh, more black snapper this season than we've uh, caught in the last Four combined. How about uh, that? Same thing with uh, yeah, and I, uh, maybe a little different area of fishing, uh, maybe a little bit different technique that we did this year versus last year. Uh, got us more black snapper, uh, and we wound up got, getting uh, more black fin than we've ever gotten as well. I think the whole state had a good year on black fin. Just about everybody uh, that was their plus fish, and it certainly was here in Northeast Florida. Was uh, absolutely. Was black- Black fin tuna. Now, what you call black snapper, most of us call mangrove snapper, right? Yeah, you know, we uh, that's more of a local term here. You know, mm-hmm. I've known as mangroves, but you know, when in Rome. <laughs> no, I got you. Now, what what uh, fish let you down this year? Uh, I think gags let us down over the summer. Uh, mm-hmm. We got them early, uh, and then they went cold. I mean, we went uh, a lot of trips uh, between gags this year, so. I actually, uh, before we got into the October fishery, I, you know, uh, was commenting to a few people that I was very disappointed in gags and the way they had uh, performed. 
Uh, but we got into the fall and the winter fishery, and, uh, you know, they did not let us down at that point. But yeah. I would say gags overall. Yeah, I got to tell you, gags in the East Coast are in such horrible shape, uh, Kevin, especially in my area up in Northeast Florida. They're almost non-existent. Um, in fact, I know that I didn't put one on the boat in 2021, put a few, wow. scamp, put a few scamps on, but, um, uh, uh, not even a whole lot of those. Well, but I tell you what, I hope we keep, if we keep taking care of gags, they will recover. I have no doubt. We've just got to watch our limits and watch what we do with them. And, uh, and hopefully I think what, what affects them a lot too is Kevin there when in their juvenile in their infancy, they're actually inshore, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I think that yep. hurts them. Yeah, but uh, well, we I, let me give you one more fish. Kobe has been an extreme disappointment in our area over the last three years. So yeah, I, I mean, we caught one. We caught one Kobe this year. No, I've done better than that. Um, our our Kobe are actually seem to be getting a little better. So so keep your chin up. But um, we're now seeing a tremendous number of shorts, which has got to equate into an improved overall population, I think, as the year goes by. Oh, I agree. I agree. Uh, Cap, we appreciate it, as always. Hopefully the weather will settle down a little bit for you, and we'll talk with you next week. All right. We'll talk to you then. Thanks, Kevin. Our thanks to Captain Kevin Lanier from KC Sport Fishing Adventures. Now, we can't leave Florida with going out through the panhandle, and that's where Captain Tyler Massey is. Tyler, how are you? We're doing good, Rick. How are you guys? Good, good. Did you get any fishing this week at all? Um, we had a couple guys fish some inshore trips mainly. Uh, you know, not making it in the Gulf this time of year. Uh, as far as the inshore stuff, though, um, you know, we're having some cold fronts move in. So when the wind's blowing, um, it's best to stay in the canals and in the bayous and up by the river. And uh, we're chasing speckled trout. And uh, that's going to be fishing in, in the, the deeper parts of the canals and bayous. And uh, mostly artificial lure fishing, throwing mirror lure mirror deans and doa shrimp and any kind of jerk bait that kind of stuff that you would want to use and uh you know that's been semi-productive it's not an everyday thing but you can definitely get on a good bite of fish um other than that uh we've been fishing around our pass we're starting to see a few sheephead down by the pass fishing on our rock jetties in the in the in the pass right there that's going out the um the channel and then also around the bridges we are catching a few sheephead some redfish and black shrimp mixed in as well so Mostly live bait fishing with the sheephead, fishing crabs or shrimp, and uh, and uh, that's been the main targets for us inshore. Yep, I can understand this time of year for you guys is almost all inshore. Hey, let me ask you a quick question. Look back on 2021. What fish performed well for you? Did you have a good year on? And what fish did you feel like just wasn't around? So one fish that, you know, start with the, what wasn't around, um, our, our close water king mackerel bite was not the, what it should have been. Um, last year, we start normally catching kings at the end of March and April. And a lot of that, you know, fishing within a couple of miles of the beach, um, fishing the close wrecks or fishing up and down the beach. Uh, it just, they just weren't there. Um, we hardly caught any fish in close, you know, fishing on our buoys and the sea buoys and around our close wrecks until, you know, late July, August. So, um, you know, the, the deep water fish were still there fishing around the, you know, the bottom structures like the edge and that kind of stuff. But the enclosed fish, they just never came in. We had plenty of bait. Uh, you know, I just don't know why they didn't show up. Maybe something in the water they didn't like or, huh. or something. But uh, they just never, never showed up on the beach in the, in the early part of the summer. What fish was good for you this year? So, um, you know, one fish that we, we did pretty good on, um, I'd say, uh, you know, our, our redfish run in the fall was better than it had been in the last few years. Um, not, I wouldn't say it was exceptional, but it was definitely better than we've seen probably in the last three or four years. So um, the bull red schooling up in, in the bay um, this, this last fall uh, was, was, you know, a little bit better. Everything else I think was about, about on par for us over here. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's a great report. Listen, we really appreciate it, Tyler. Please tell me we can check with you next week. I'll be here. All Take right. Take care. We'll see y'all. Captain Tyler Massey. From the Panhandle. And that wraps up our little trip around the state tonight. Once again, I apologize for my voice. I really, I, no, you know what? I do feel worse than I sound. So I wanted to say I feel better than I sound, but that's not true. But we got through it. We stormed right through it like you do on a rough day's fishing. It was interesting today, and it was interesting to hear what guys were happy with this year 
and what they were unhappy with. It seems like everybody loves a blackfin tuna, and now that we've got the two fish per person uh, regulations, there's no reason to think that we're going to go back to having slow years for them. I hope they keep coming. We'll just have to watch the natural cycles and see how they do. It's funny. Some places had plenty of redfish this year, northeast Florida being one of them. Some places didn't do well with redfish at all. Sort of depends on where that spawning stock seems to set up. One thing for sure, nobody was bragging about mahi this year. And mahi, of course, tough all over. But anyway, the weather's going to settle down and our fishing will get back to normal. So next week will be more about up-to-the-minute fishing. Our thanks again to young Nicholas Fan with his new world record 58.8-ounce Jack Creval. Congratulations to him. I enjoyed talking to him. This week's Action Spotter was brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. By Shimano, bringing people and nature together. By Tournament Master Chum. Well, it's the best chum on earth. By Nasara Paradise Fishing, your dream vacation. By DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. And by Young Boats. You want the finest in flat spay and offshore hybrids? You need to check out youngboats.com. Until next week, for Florida Sports and Magazine, I'm Captain Rick Riles, and we'll see you on the river.